Hey guys, it's Heather from Calva Plan, and today I want to talk to you guys about why planning is important and how I have been reminded recently that planning is important. And not just planning, but specifically memory planning, although you could do what I'm going to be showing you in any planner. It doesn't have to be a memory planner. But I'm going to give you a little bit of a backstory before I tell you about these pieces right here. So for those of you who don't know, my mom, um, her name was Laura. She passed away when I was 18 and a half years old. She had leukemia. She was first diagnosed when I was 14, and um, she was then in remission about a year later, was in remission for almost two years, and her cancer came back about two months after I graduated high school in July of 2005 was when her leukemia came back. Um, when leukemia comes back, you pretty much have to have a bone marrow transplant, or it will always come back, even when you get in remission. So... My mom had a really hard time finding a bone marrow um, match, but she found one that fall of 2005, and she did her bone marrow transplant just after Thanksgiving of my freshman year of college. The transplant technically worked, um, but before you do the transplant, you do this really hard chemo, and the chemo is what ended up um, basically killing her body. Her organs started failing, and then in January of 2006, her lungs started bleeding, and after that, there wasn't anything that you can do. So my siblings and I had to make the awful decision to take her off of life support. And she passed away on January 14th of 2006. Um, my mom was the most amazing person I ever knew. She was so hospitable. She was kind. She was wise. She was funny. She had the best laugh. Um, I just loved her a whole bunch. And it's been 14 years now since she passed away. And I've missed her every second since. Um, so that's a little backstory. And then, so now she's been gone 14 years. And recently, my dad sold his house in Alabama. And he's buying a new house in Alabama. But he kind of has like two weeks of limbo where he doesn't technically have a house. So he came out to visit us in Texas. And um, when he did, he brought a box of stuff that I had packed up when we sold my mom's house. And I had just stuck it in a closet at my dad's house. And I didn't even know it was there. So he brings me this box. And inside is a bunch of photos, um, including this one. This is a new photo that I have. Um, anytime I find a new photo of my mom, I just love it. So this is me and my twin sister and my mom. Um, if I had to guess, we were probably about five in this photo. Maybe a little bit older. I'm not really sure. It doesn't say on the back. Um, so it has a ton of pictures with my mom. It had this... Oh no, I dropped it. I've never even seen this before. I don't know how this ended up in the box, but it had a birthday card from my first birthday that my mom wrote for me in 1988. Um, I never even knew that that was a thing. And so those are, you know, special things that I have. And inside of the box was also this little blue book. And I have never seen this little blue book before. Um, I had no idea that it even existed, but what this is, is it is a pocket dater from 1981 and it was my mom's and I never even knew this was a thing, but this pocket dater finding this the other day, um, I mean, it like, it meant so much to me for a couple of different reasons that we're going to talk about today. So first off, this was my mom's little pocket planner from 1981. You can see her first month, she didn't really write a whole bunch. You can see here it says one month steady. So I guess that means my parents had been dating one month like steady. I, I don't know what seven months means. I'm not really sure if they like went on a date first, but it took them a while to like go steady. I don't really know. Um, but and then here's when she got initiated into being a Zeta. So you can see in September, she didn't really write much. It wasn't a habit for her yet. In October, she tried to turn it more into a habit. She went to the Beach Boys. She went to the Gadsden High homecoming dance with my dad. Um, she, Court and I went to movie to a movie in Red Lobster. Court's my dad. Two months steady. Um, Amanda's Halloween party. Me and Court, Bonnie and Jim doubled. Music City Bowl. Me and Rhea and Bonnie. So it's just really fun to see that. And then starting in November, she wrote... Every single day, her handwriting was atrocious. I know it's kind of hard to read, um, but I have spent some time trying to kind of go through and decipher it all and really see what she was doing in 1981 and 1982. This was when my parents were dating. Um, I think they got married in 83. So this was just during their dating time 
you know, before she probably even really was thinking about children. And she, she wrote a lot about what her and my dad were doing. And so this little pocket book, this pocket planner, it did a lot of things for me. Um, one, it, t- it taught me a lot about my mom and my dad from their dating days that I didn't know. It's kind of fun to read this and see like how excited she was about my dad. Like Court and I went to his church, court called, called court, um, holiday spent great day with court, studied that night, called court, um, c- court called, court called, court called, I called court, um, went to Came home, went to Thanksgiving service with Court, went to Court's family for lunch, went to my family to play football, ate dinner. So it's just like a lot of things that her and my dad um, were doing. And it's re- it was really cool to see what it is that my parents were doing there. Here was her birthday. She went to church with Court. Family came over. Court and I went to Weston's. So it's just fun. It was kind of fun to learn what her and my dad were doing that otherwise I would have never, I would have never had a way to know what their dating days were like. So it was really cool to connect with my mom like this after so long. Uh, She's been gone for 14 years. You know, I never thought I would learn new things about my mom and connect with her in this way now that she's been gone for so long. But I mean, life surprises you and puts things like this in your lap. And it is probably one of my most prized possessions. Um, Not only did it help me learn more about my mom, but it really helped me to just feel connected to her, um, in a really, really crazy way because I never knew that my mom was a planner. My mom was a planner baby all 38 years ago. This was, this is 38 years old. My mom was a planner babe and I didn't know it. And she did. I don't think she kept one of these when we were kids or growing up. I've never seen anything like this. She did keep journals and stuff, but I never saw an actual planner. And so seeing this, as an actual planner, like I, it, I feel like my like soul, like connected with hers more. I know that probably sounds weird, but it's true. And like when my mom passed away, I wasn't a planner. Um, I didn't know that my life was going to take me, you know, where it has taken me. But like finding this is like, me and my mom had something in common that I didn't even know. She enjoyed writing down these memories and in a planner, like she enjoyed doing that. And I enjoyed doing that. And for years I did memory keeping. I mean, I I have a memory keeper from 2016, 17, 18, and then I did half of 2019. And then last summer I kind of dropped off. It got to be too much on my plate. I didn't have time for it anymore, but honestly finding this has like spoken to my soul and it has reminded me That memory planning is important and planning is important. Not even memory planning, but just planning. Even if you're not writing memories like this, just planning um, is important. Look, here was our one year study. Anyway, um, it's important because like my mom in 1981, 1982, she didn't know that she was going to pass away young. She didn't know that her daughter was going to find this 38 years later and feel so connected to her. Um, and like that, she, my mom didn't know that her pocket planner from 1981 was going to become her future daughter's like most prized possession. But it, it literally like means the world to me. I like can't even believe that this is in my hands. And it really just reminded me that memory keeping is important. And it really like struck a fire under me to figure out a way to keep memory planning. I haven't memory planned since June of 2019. And I really, really wanted to do it again, especially after being inspired by my mom. So my mom really reminded me that memory planning is important, which is crazy because she's been passed away for 14 years, but she still like has inspired me and reminded me that it's important to write our memories down because in 38 years, who knows who might have this, this planner. It could be my future children. It could be a future grandchild. I mean, you don't know what life is going to be like in 38 years and you don't know who is going to feel connected to you um, because you're, you're not around or maybe, you know, you don't remember things or whatever reason. Maybe you are around, but you don't remember the day-to-day stuff. It just like has really reminded me why memory planning is important. So I wanted to show you guys 
how I have decided to memory plan. I started this after I found this journal. So I did have to go back and kind of back journal some of the things because um, I just started it, but I just used my other planner to help me figure that out. So this is a um, soft bound horizontal planner from Erin Condren. It is an A5 size, so it's bigger than a mini happy planner, but smaller than a classic happy planner. Um, and so I'm super excited about what I've created. So I wrote my name in the front and then here I wrote a note about finding this pocket planner and kind of what it meant to me and how it inspired me to start using this planner to journal. And so here I'm actually going to cover this up. You probably, if you already saw it, then you already saw it, but, um, there's somebody anyway. This I'm here. I'm going to write things that I'm grateful for each month or things that are highlights from the month. Um, and then here I'm going to write at the beginning of each month. So normally this page just looks like this. Okay. So normally this is the beginning of a new month. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to print a photo of myself every month and I'm going to write a letter to myself. Um, just kind of encouraging me throughout the month. So I took the time to do that. And then these pages normally look like this. So you normally have birthdays and goals and then a spot here. I thought it would be fun to put a picture. A four, this is just a four by six. I printed it on my Canon selfie. This is also a four by six, but I trimmed it some because it was a little bit too wide. And then this was a four by six, but I trimmed it a lot. I trimmed this one to fit exactly in this box. I measured this box and then this one, I just trimmed it up. Um, and then I put a sticker here and then, so this is like a big event from January and then just a cute picture from January. And then on the monthly view, I just put important things that were going on that month. Just, I, I'm not filling out everything, but just kind of an overview of the big things. And then what I did was I went through and I journaled something from every single day this month. And then I just put three photos from the week at the bottom. I printed these on my Canon selfie. I put 12 photos on a four by six. So it was four photos, four photos, four photos. When you put 12 photos on a four by six in the, in the square grid, then they fit in this box. So just three photos every month or every week, nothing big, because that was one thing I felt like I couldn't keep up with, um, the photos of the other memory keeper. So I kind of like that this is just three photos and every day just journaling something that we did that day. It doesn't have to be anything big, which this really reminded me that it doesn't have to be anything big. Like some of these is like went to school, went over to courts, stayed at Deanne's that night, went to school, went over to courts. He fell asleep. I watched TV and ate supper with him. So it's like not anything crazy exciting and that's what I've tried to remember it's like this is literally just my mom's daily tasks nothing there's very few things in here that are like oh my gosh this is hilarious or this is awesome um but it still made me feel connected to her so I kept that in mind as I was journaling I didn't have to write anything crazy but I just filled it in for every day and then the way this planner works is it actually the last few days of January or in February. So I already filled those out as well. Went ahead and printed photos for the week while I was at it. But I think this is going to be so much fun for me to keep up with. I think I'm going to be inspired to keep up with it as well because it's like a project that, you know, my mom, I almost, I know I'm not doing it with my mom, but I almost feel like she is the reason I'm doing it. And so it just like inspires me even more to keep up with it um, because her planner inspired me so much. And it just seriously means so much to me. And so I just wanted to kind of update you guys on how I'm going to be memory planning this year. I wanted to remind you why memory keeping is important. It connects us to people. Um, it reminds people of who we are. Um, and it's just a great like thing to do. So if you aren't currently memory keeping in some way, I hope that this video encourages you to find some way to do it because it is important. And I'm thankful to my mom for reminding me that. So if you like this video, I hope you hit the like button. If you want to see more of my videos, hit that subscribe button and happy planning.